Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwented, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And we're back with, uh, yeah, a faction that has been the strongest faction of them all for quite a few months now. And that definitely didn't change with the Tenet coup expansion because uh, Syndicate actually got quite a few good cards to the, well, added to their uh, card pool, uh, especially since it also benefits the bounty archetype, which is even better just for your line pocket stack, and that's what exactly what we're going to be checking out today, as we're going to take a look at the Money Hunters deck. Now, what is Money Hunters? Money Hunters is a very heavy control deck that also focuses on having bounty applied to a lot of your opponent's units to get the coins back that you spent on damaging those units and just keep that loop going. The reason why it's called Money Hunters, of course, is one, we earn a lot of money, and two, we're gonna be using a lot of the Witch Hunter cards, as you might already see in this deck list. You can check out the deck list in the description down below. The link to the Plague Wet website is there, so you can port this deck for yourself. Don't forget to upvote it there as well. Uh, and we're gonna go through each and every single one of those cards one by one, but if you're not interested in that you can also check out the example matches immediately by using the timeline down below so first up is the sea jackal four power for four provisions doesn't really do much on its own but has a very good fee ability so for two coins you boost yourself by two but if you're above seven coins or seven coins or higher you boost yourself by three instead so a very efficient way of spending your coins we call this a 50 percent layup as you uh, get 50 percent more points than you're actually spending coins if you used Directly. Next up is Smuggle. We're trying to uh, have a lot of different, um, yeah, crime clans in this deck. So, because we also have Sigur Ruven to get a little bit of profit. So, Smuggle, three coins, and spawn a Flaming Rose Footman and an Allied Rose. So, six uh, points, but one extra because of our leader ability, because we're using Lion Pocket. So, we're getting a coin for every crime card we play. Then, Swindle, profit four to six, but for each Allied Crowd Splitter. Cr Crown splitter, you increase the minimal amount by one. So, meaning that if you have two crown splitters, you actually get a guaranteed six profits, seven with the leader ability. Then, Dip in the Pontar, another crime card. So there's a lot of low power uh, crime cards in this deck. Dip in the Pontar, three coins and three damage on an enemy unit. And of course, another coin for. Uh, from line pockets itself. And the final four provision uh, crime card is Slander, three profit, and of course we have our first bounty card. So place a bounty on an enemy unit. Again, bounty is a status effect that you apply on an enemy unit. Once that unit died, you dies, you get the amount of coins based on the base power of the unit that you kill. So for example, if you kill a five power unit, you uh, get five coins in return when that unit dies. So that way you can get enough coins again to kill something else. And then we have cards that actually benefit from having bounties on the board, the Witch Hunter Executioner. Three power for five provisions gives you two coins and on V1, so with every coin you spend, you give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn. If that unit has a bounty, you damage it by one instead. So the Witch Hunter Executioner is very capable of killing bounty units. He also is in this deck twice, so you have plenty of damage healers to keep going. Then of course, Blacksmiths, we also have quite a few crown splitters in this deck, so four power, for five provisions give you two co coins and for fee one you boost an allied unit by one. So in case you don't have any targets anymore you have the coerced blacksmiths to start boosting your own units or you want to protect one of your uh, damage dealers by giving it a little bit more power. Then bloody good friend six power for five provisions. Insanity meaning that you can use your health as a way of spending uh, well an alternative to spending coins. Uh, on its V ability, and the V ability is for each coin you give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn, but if it is boosted, damage it by one instead. So slightly different prerequisite than the Witch Hunter Executioner, which needs bounty. This card just needs a boosted unit to do damage instead of applying bleeding. Then the new crime card, the Confession Extractor. Five coins, uh, six with line pockets, and while this card is in your graveyard, you damage an enemy unit by one whenever you place a bounty on it. This happens three times for each of these cards. There's two of them in the deck, so just you use them beforehand, you get the coins, you can use those coins to do something else, but then from that point onwards, every time you apply a bounty, you will damage a unit by one extra, which can get you over the, um, the cap of nine coins, of course, and kill something that is 10 power or above. 
Then Hysteria, another bounty supported crime card, place a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by 3, but if it already has a bounty, you double the damage to 6 which is uh, very powerful indeed, especially in this deck, uh, but also just applies bounties. So this is another card that actually gives us bounties. Um, and of course you get one extra coin from Light Pocket as usually. Then we have Kurt, six power for six provisions and a very versatile card. So on deploy, if you use him on the melee bow, you can place a bounty on an enemy unit. If you use him on the range row, instead you can actually purify one of your own units or one of your opponent's units. So it doesn't really matter, you can purify defenders, you can purify a uh, veil away to actually apply another bounty on that same card. Um, so yeah, this card is definitely necessary in this deck. Just in case you face a um, very veil heavy deck. Because uh, of course veil will block all status effects including bounty. Now we have Horsens Freak Show, the most popular card in uh, Syndicate these days. 4 power, 1 armor for 7 provisions, gives you 2 coins, and for each 2 coins you spend, if he's on the melee row, you damage an enemy unit by 2. Just an other very versatile damage dealer. Then the uh, strongest damage dealer in the game, uh, Tunnel Drill, 5 power for 7 provisions, profit 1, so you get 1 single coin. And for each two coins you damage an enemy unit by one. But you increase the damage by one for each adjacent crown splitter. So if you put this card in between two crown splitters, this card deals three damage for every two coins you spend, which is immense. It's another 50% layup, but on damage instead of on points, which means that you can quickly kill a lot of units. For example, you can kill a 12 point uh, unit with just eight coins. Um, Remember, your leader ability also gives you extra coins, so uh, you can easily go even higher than that in a single turn. And Furco the Sculptor, one of our uh, tutor cards, so two power for eight provisions on deploy. If you play him on the melee row, you play a crime card from your deck and you can choose whatever you want. Usually we're going to go for Novigradian Justice just to tin our deck a little bit from the very start. Then we have Graydon. Graydon is, to my mind, in a bounty deck, specifically in a bounty deck, oh, more powerful than Moriel. So Moriel allows you to kill a unit destroyed completely for six coins and a tribute ability. Graydon does this as long as that unit has a bounty. So if you give a very high powered unit a bounty, you can just destroy it with this card without any coins needed to spend. You can still spend coins on Graydon, because for five coins on tribute, you boost self by the unit's base power. Imagine doing that against the monster deck. Imagine doing that against a Melusine. A Skellige Melusine. Remember Melusine from uh, last week's deck guide? That could be immense on this card. Green is really good, but of course is in danger of being bricked. If you don't have any bounties left, you have about six bounty cards in this deck, so that should still be doable. But if you don't have any bounties left, this card will be useless. It is also a targeted ability, so you destroy an enemy unit with a bounty. An enemy unit, not the enemy unit. Gonna come in uh, very importantly in a minute. So uh, even if that card is protected by a bounty, Green will not be able to kill it. Uh, but still, very good card if played correctly. Now we have Vivaldi Bank, another tutor card, so three coins, and look at the top card from your deck, plus an additional card for every coin you possess. So if you possess six coins, after the profit of course, you will see the top seven cards from your deck. You can play the top card for free, uh, or any other card for a coin cost equal to its distance from the top. So if you select the third card, you will need to spend two coins because the first one is three, then the second one is one coin and the third one is two coins. Uh, once you're done with that, you can play that card for the amount of coins that you just spent and then shuffle the remaining cards back into your deck so you don't know what your deck order is from that point onwards. But very cool tutor card, especially in the later rounds where you uh, usually end up around nine cards. So if you have a full pouch, you can just choose whatever card you want. Then the new legendary card, the Scoundrel, 12 power for 10 provisions, a whopping 12 power on deploy. You summon the top bronze unit from your opponent's deck to the opposite row and place a bounty on it. So for example, if you select a 4 power unit, then this card will go down to 8 points in total that you gain, because you gain 12 yourself, but you give your opponents 4 points. If you choose the tribute ability, so you spend two coins, this goes even lower, because of course you lose two coins, but you can choose whatever bronze unit you will summon to the board. That is important, because that allows you to select something really, really big, but the strongest ability on this card is actually its fee ability, because for each coin you damage the enemy unit with bounty by one. 
D being the very important word here, because that means that the scoundrel doesn't need to target anything. You tap the scoundrel and it will damage the unit with bounty automatically, wherever that unit is. If it has immunity, if it's protected by defender, that doesn't matter. This card will damage that unit regardless. It's the only card that actually deals damage, I think, in Syndicate that doesn't really target a card. It just does it automatically on the bounty unit. There can only be one bounty unit, so that balances itself out. But still, behind the defender, this can be very, very strong. And then, of course, we talked about it already. Another crime card, Novigrade Injustice. You play a Bronze Dwarf or Crown Splitter unit from your deck. And if you already have a Dwarf, which happens automatically with Furco the Sculptor, you also spawn a Cleaver's Muscle on the allied melee row. So you have Tinning, you have um, about 10 points and another coin from the fact that this is a crime card. Then we're getting into the stronger cards, of course. Cleaver, 1 power for 11 provisions. Intimidate, so meaning that he boosts himself for every crime card that you play. Deploy, spawn and play Shakedown. So Shakedown is another crime card. 3 profit and boosts an allied unit by 3. You also increase this card's Intimidate by 1 for every allied crowns uh not allied every adjacent crown splitter allied would be very powerful uh, and he also has a fee ability for four coins you spawn a cleaver's muscle on this row giving you a 25 percent layup on your coin expenditure because cleaver's muscle is five power so very good to create that crown splitter pocket for tuttle drill um especially because those cleaver's muscles are shielded so they're even harder to take out then sigi reuven sigi reuven is eight profit in this deck so four Power for 11 provisions gives you 8 coins, has Intimidate, so also boosts himself for every crime card that you play afterwards. Uh, and he increases his profit ability for every unique gang category in your starting deck. Um, so we have uh, 4 extra crime, uh, well, gang categories, so that gives us the 8 profit normally. Or I might have miscalculated, but I think it's 8 profit. Then the Witchfinder again, um, we used this in our previous Syndicate deck as well, still a very good card, 7 power for 12 provisions, and on deploy you spawn 3 Syndicate crowns, which are artifacts that gives you 1 coin each if you use them, uh, just allowing you to go over the cap. And then at the end of your turn, if no enemy unit has a bounty, place a bounty on the highest power enemy unit. Which is why Graydon is so important, because um, the Witchfinder will, regardless of whatever status effect is on that card, will place a bounty um, on the highest power unit. So, including the fact that it could be an immune unit, including the fact that it could be a veiled unit, which is the biggest problem for this card, if the target, the highest unit, is Veiled, then you can't really do anything with Witchfinder, but of course you can purify the Veil away with Kurt if you want to. Tiger's Eye is our stratagem of course, with Syndicate we always use a Tiger's Eye to get another 5 coins to start with, which is really powerful. And then of course a leader ability once more, you get an order ability where you can gain a single coin with 6 charges, uh, and whenever you play a crime card you get another coin. Totaling up to around 15 points every single match, because uh, this is just a really good leader ability. But with that discussed, let's head into ex a few example matches to show off just how powerful this deck really is. So first match is against the dreaded monsters, but monsters is actually pretty free if you're playing lined pockets. Um, just because of the fact that you can kill so many of your opponent's units. We get a pretty good starting uh, hand, not the best, mind you, but it is something. We have a few damage dealers, we have the confession, conf confession extractor, yeah, confession extractor, which is always good. Furco the Sculptor is perfect, and I think I'm going to leave it at that then, because uh, Furco the Sculptor will allow us to tin our deck pretty well. We have damage dealers, we have a few bounty cards, so yeah, perfect, I think. So our opponent starts, they're going with Fruits of Isgit, which means that we need to be ready to kill as many units as possible. We're not going to do that just yet. I think there's no real need for it. We could actually Hysteria one of those Andrega Larvas. Uh, but for now, we're just going to use our um, Furco the Sculptor into Novigradian Justice. Starting combo gives us already a single coin, and then with Coerced Blacksmith, we get another one. Um... Technically, we could already go for Tunnel Drill here. I'm not going to, because Tunnel Drill is going to become very important in that final round. And I think they forgot to use Gurnicor's Fruit there at the start, because that would have been a 2-power Fruit. Oh yeah, if you're using it with Griffin, not that much of a problem. 
I think I'm already gonna go with Sunnel Drill regardless. It's really tempting. It's really tempting. Yeah, so the Griffin isn't gonna go anywhere. Um, so I don't really have to hurry myself to kill that thing. Um, but since we have... We might as well bounty it, right? Um, yeah, let's bounty it. We are. We started at red coin, so we don't really need to overplay at the beginning. We get an elder bear, and are they going to boost the griffin? Ooh, they are. That actually is working to my benefit here, because I could now just use horse and freak show, and that's going to get me to nine coins, so I can take that down severely. If that becomes a problem, if they keep boosting that card, I'm going to have to do something else. But right now, we can put it down to 6, which is the perfect range to actually then use um, Hysteria to kill it in one go. And now that Horsens Freak Show is on the board, we also have a way of um, just dealing damage. And I should actually use just Swindle instead of Hysteria, because Hysteria I can get another bounty out of. Now we have self eater self eater we will be able to kill as well so that is absolutely fine so yeah this is uh, this seems like a good start so let's use uh actually just need to use confession Instra extractor although I'll, I'll use that later because i want to keep those damage sticks for later uh so let's use swindle giving us a seven points which is really good so we're gonna damage the griffin twice but griffin is nine power so we're gonna get nine coins so I'm just going to boost Horsens Freak Show to 6 and then kill the Griffin. Uh, that will now give us 9 coins again, so we can also kill the Self Eater, giving us the same amount of uh, yeah points as our opponent again. And we didn't really spend any big cards, which is also really good. Ah, uh, and then we get the Rat Catcher S. That's probably the biggest... Um, Problem. Well, the, the, the biggest fault that somebody can make, I think, when you're playing against Syndicate. Um, so right now they're at 29 um, points, but Red Catcher S actually loses an extra point if she's damaged while you don't have Sabbath. So if I use Confession Extractor, I think if I calculated this correctly, my last damage tick is going to do an extra bit of damage. So Orson will hit the Red Catcher S, two and now she's gonna take extra damage there we go so she's gonna go down immediately there we go and we get whispers now so that's again going for okay they killed furco that was really necessary i think i could kill whispers with hysteria um so yeah this that gives us an extra hit because of confession extractor and that gives us just enough coins to do this um, and I could kill the Elder Bear and be at equal again, but I don't want to do that just yet. I'll just keep it at that. As long as our opponent just keeps playing cards. Okay, so Weavers is going to now kill... Oh no, Boost. That's a Boost card. Boost the Elder Bear. Hmm. Do I want to keep going? I'm just counting here. I don't think I want to. Because I could do another damage tick on uh, Weavers here. Although I really don't want to give our opponent like a short... You know what, let's, let's, keep, let's keep going. So let's hit um, uh, Weavers here. Because I'm going to otherwise over profit. And then I can use this over here. We still have like 12 points left. So I think this is fine. Just want to see what our opponent does now. We get Bloody Mistress now. Oh, okay. Fine. Um, I don't even need to spend any coins to... I'm just going to leave it at that. That was way too early for Bloody Mistress, I think. Um, I, could, I mean, I could take her out. I could now use Tunnel Drill and just kill everything. Um, but that's not going to be that useful, I think. So let's just end it there. Let them get the points. We don't really care about that first round since we uh, started at Red Coin anyway. And they're going to play She Who Knows, but that's not going to make too much of a difference. Um, it is a 10 point card that is now on the field. But I start with four coins and I could. Oh, I definitely could. Oh, I definitely could. There's one card I really want to have now. 
Um, so let's get rid of Sea Jackal, which under Executioner. Um, I should probably keep. I'm gonna get rid of. No, I can purify the Thunder with Kurt. I'm gonna try and get rid of Witch Hunter Executioner. If I get Cleaver, I'm really lucky. But I probably won't. Uh, so let's try. We get Graydon. Okay, that's even better. So opponent is deciding. Our opponent is actually gonna keep playing. Probably gonna go for Maxi. Okay, not what I was expecting. I think the best play is probably now Witchfinder. Witchfinder is gonna bounty uh, She Who Knows. And also damage her because of the confession extractor that's still in our deck. And then we get Selfie too. Okay. And we get another one of these. I'm gonna spend one coin to actually use Grain to his full potential. So now we're gonna use his tribute ability. So for five coins, we can now kill uh, She Who Knows. We don't have any coins left, which is also important because we're gonna get nine in return. So She Who Knows now dies. And we get 10 points on Graydon. So we flipped the um, points there, the points there. So our opponent is, it's almost impossible for our opponent, I think, to clear this. And then we get Gankian, which is another... Um... So that's interesting. So now I'm going to use... Yeah, so I'm going to use the Scandrel now. Um, so Scandrel goes over here. I'm going to use the Tribute ability. To pull the second... Ooh. They don't have a second Gankian. They probably have it in hand. I'm going to have to take out the Griffin then, which is fine. Uh, so the Griffin gets bountied. I have two coins left here. And now I can just do this. There we go. And that gives us another nine coins. Still ten points ahead, so I don't think... We are in trouble, because we can also kill Gankian with ease now. And our opponent really should pass, but... Oh wow, they're just gonna go for it. That's probably gonna be Mamuna? And no, another Gankian. I mean, I don't really need to do anything. Because um, I can just use the Scandrel, like this. And then we get full coin pouch again, and I can actually... <laughs> can actually do this, um, bounty the Gankian again, and then just uh, do, do this again. Because this is just so fun. There we go, kill all, all the things, and we get a full pouch again, so that's just really great for carryover. There we go. Double the points and still two cards ahead, so I think we have this match in the back. Our opponent really shouldn't have played Gurney Koya in that first round. That was a re really overextending. Um, I think I should get rid of... Tunnel Drill. This Tunnel Drill is going to be useless if I don't pay attention here. Um, I could get rid of Confession Extractor. Uh, right now it's probably not that good anymore. We get bloody good friends. I'm going to try. Uh, I can still get Hysteria down. I can get rid of Dip in the Pond. And we got Cleaver. Yeah, okay. That's, uh, that's, uh, I feel so bad for our opponent right now. Um... I mean, we can put Bloody Good Friends down first, because that gives me the um, extra Intimidate damage as well. But yeah, this isn't, this isn't going to take long. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Even that Idaran isn't going to save you. Um, I'm actually not going to take any chances here. I am going to um, get one extra coin um, and then use Tunnel Drill with only a single uh, card here, because I really want to get rid of Idaran. Um, I don't want to see that here. Now we got Royal Decree, which is probably going to do either Karantir or Mamuna. Wait, did they forget that I completely destroyed Mamuna? Because they don't have a card to... Yeah, they they don't, do they? I don't think they have anything that they can... They I, I cleaned that out with Scoundrels, even that is broken. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Line Pockets is really, really powerful against monsters. I am so sorry, your Mamuna is now useless, yeah. So it, it does eat the Griffin, so it's still 11 points. But that's about it. Let's put Cleaver in between here. This will mean that Cleaver gets uh, a 3 point boost. Um, and then we could technically start spending uh, some more on Tunnel Drill in a minute. But I'm gonna do this first. So we get that nice pocket for Tunnel Drill. But yeah, I think you see where this is going. You can even kill the Witch Apprentice um, just with Hysteria. Yeah, there we go. 
We would have been easily able to kill the Witch Apprentice first, and then we get a lot of coins to actually deal damage on Mamuno. So that was uh, really, really nicely done. Second match is against Precision Strike. That's always a more difficult matchup because, of course, there's a lot of damage dealing cards on their side as well. But there's enough of both damage dealers and um, bounty cards in this deck that you could technically overtake all of that. So this is not the worst starting hand. I don't have a lot of damage dealers, so I don't know if Slander is that useful in this first round. Dip in the Pond there is really good to take out Whispers. So I think I'm just going to get rid of Slander for now. We get a Witch Hunter Executioner, which is another damage dealer, but we don't have any bounties anymore. So I'm just going to get rid of it as well. Nova Creedian, uh, Vivaldi Bank is not that bad. Let's get rid of Smuggle really quickly and we get uh, bloody good friends. Um, which might actually be the card that we just start with. So let's just play bloody good friends. It's a 6 power card that our opponent can destroy, of course, but um, it's a tall order to destroy that in one go. They lose that card then, but with a single hit and a Nature's Rebuke, that is definitely possible. But of course, I want to have a Crown Split to survive at least one round, so I can actually use Nova Grady Injustice. And our opponent actually lets us do that, which is good. Because um, then I can use Nova Grady Injustice, get the final um, Coerced Blacksmith out of our deck, because remember, we also need to have one of those. Um, and we get... This nice crown splitter combo in one go. Should I already use Tiger's Eye? Um, I could, but then I've kind of forced myself to use uh, the Sea Jackal next turn, so I'm not going to just yet. The Dolblatana sources is, of course, going to survive, so they will be able to use a special card. And we get Nature's Rebuked on that. Ooh, but you leave. You leave your sorcerer unprotected, that is not good, not good at all. So let's just use a Horseman's Freak Show and kill that sorceress. Because that's just the number of points that I don't want to really deal with. Um, and I think Tiger's Eye... I can actually keep the Tiger's Eye on there. So now of course we're going to get Nature's Rebuked on Horseman's Freak Show. Probably with 300, yeah, Forest Protector. There we go, another Nature's Rebuke down, so that's 12 points in one go for them, but still lagging behind a little bit. Um, I can actually use the Tiger's Eye now. So Tiger's Eye is going to give us five coins. So I can just hit the Forest Protector once and then use uh, Dip in the Pontar, although I really want to keep Dip in the Pontar for... I really want to keep Dip in the Pontar for when a Whisperer pops up. Because I only have one Dip in the Pontar and it's just a, a good damage match. Uh, so let's just use the Coerced Blacksmith, another one, and just damage that Force Protector one more time. Still have six coins in our pouch, so that should be fine. And there we go, the Whisperer of Dolblatana. That's something I wanted to take out, there it is. Um, I can actually just, because I'm going to get four coins from um, Dip in the Pontar, so I'm just going to boost up the uh, Bloody Good Friends over there, and then use Dip in the Pontar on the Whisperer of Dolblatana. Giving us 9 coins. Um, 9 coins is actually good. I'm going to keep 9 coins because that means that I can get a 10 point Sea Jackal next if our opponent hasn't passed yet. So against Squiretel these days it's very important that you um, try to win round 1. Just because of the fact that you have some very strong cards at the very end of this. Uh, with boards and the like. Um, there's still one Nature's Rebuke in the deck. Okay, they're going to pass, uh, which gives us a full coin pouch for the next round. Which begs the question if we should push. Because we have a really good set of cards in our hand right now. And the longer this goes on for uh, Squiretel, the more annoying it's going to be. So we get our damage healer, we get Scoundrel. So I think I'm just going to get rid of Sea Jackal. We get Swindle, which is also really good. Uh, we have two damage dealers. We have Hysteria. And we already have two bounty cards. So I don't think Hysteria is the best card that we can get. If we can get Tunnel Drill without... No. Without having to do anything for it, I was going to say. Uh, so Tunnel Drill is still in the deck. But I think we can get it with... Yeah, I think we can get it with Vivaldi Bank. Let's just use Smuggle first. Smuggle is going to give us a nice amount of coins. And then I can use the Scoundrel to actually try and 
get something from their deck. So we get Circle of Life, it's not gonna kill. Scoundrel is 12 points, of course, if they try and um, take that out. But it just gives me a full co coin pouch. I want to avoid getting too much coins now. So I think I'm going to go full out here. Yeah, let's just push. So let's play the Scoundrel. Uh, tribute for two. And then let's get... Ooh. These cards don't have Veil, right? Yeah, let's get the Elven Seer out. Um, and then just kill it. With uh, the Scoundrel. That gives us six coins. Which is a good total to actually start using Cleaver next. And we get Kogalti Heatwave on the Scoundrel, which is fine. So that gets rid of one of our damage dealers. I'm actually going to use Cleaver next. Uh, we can actually double tap him um, to get some more muscle on the board. Ooh, a five points Whisperer of Dolblatana. Are they gonna? Yeah, they're gonna completely kill Cleaver here. That gives them another six points. Oh yeah, I think this is ideal. So 11-11, they use their entire leader ability, but they are now forced to use another card. The one card that I can target with the Witch Hunter now, uh, the Witch Finder now, is actually Veiled, so I can't put a bounty on it. Um, and I think that's the last one they had, so I am actually gonna pass. They don't get an extra point automatically, the hand boosting was already gone, so I think this is fine. Yeah, okay, we get Riot's Caress. Okay. Okay. Well, we have Final Say as well. Um, so if we can get Brayden... Uh, Tunnel Drill is, by the way, used to Snell. I'm not going to be able to use Tunnel Drill, but we do have another Witch Hunter Executioner, I think. And the Confession Extractors. I could go full bounty, but I don't have a damage shield right now. So I'm going to get rid of Hysteria and get another Confession Extractor. So the Witch Finder is going to have to survive. Unless I really want to risk it now and just get rid of another Confession Extractor. But if I get Tunnel Drill... I tried it, it's Furco. Okay, that's fine. Whew. <laughs> that, that was too risky. If I pulled Tunnel Drill, that would have been just a, a completely useless card. Um, even though with Furco we could technically get... Uh, we couldn't actually. No, we don't have another crown splitter left. So that is fine. So we can actually just start playing really passively. Um, we don't have a confession extractor in the deck just yet. We get Call of the Forest first. And that is Dunka. Dunka is also failed. So we can't really hurt Dunka directly. Uh, we lost our all our damage healers here. Okay, fine. Confession Extractor, just giving us six coins. Setting up for later. I will not be able to kill Dunka, I think. Yeah, because I just can't apply bounties. So we get Isengrim's Council. Okay, that is actually good. Because I can do something with that. I can damage it again and put a bounty on it. That's probably the best. So there we go. Bounty on the Whisperer. Uh, not the Whisperer, the Sorceress. And she gets purified. Of course. And now they can actually use that ability, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was their last Riot's Caress. Although, of course, they can spawn another one if they want to. <laughs> so let's do Witchfinder now. So that's going to also put a bounty on the Sorceress. But of course, if they get another Dryad's Caress out of that, it's just for, for nothing. And then they can kill it with Dunka, yeah, okay, that's fine. But they are going to lose their Sorcerer now. And then the Elven Seer. Ooh. Oof, oof, oof. Okay, um... Never mind, we can kill the uh, the sorcerer now. There we go. Down it goes. Um, yeah, I can actually put some bleeding on the Elven Seer as well. It's gonna get negated anyway with the uh, the orbs. Oh, this is gonna get interesting. So we get Circle of Life now on 
This is really interesting. But they forgot to actually do something with the Elven Seer, so I think I still have a Hysteria card, yeah. But I don't have a Spender, which is not that much of a problem. I can still get the Sea Jackal out. Uh, but I'm going to have to play this really late. So let's use... I'm counting here, so that's going to give me four coins. It doesn't really matter, I don't have a Spender anyway. So, um, Hysteria is going to bounty the Elven Seer here and destroy it in one go. I still have a lot of coins on the field, so I really need to... I'm going to lose a lot of coins as well. So I'm going to have to use the Sea Jackal to spend all of my coins just because of the fact that everything else is dead. You are no it's going to be two orbs, um, which is fine. Don't I, I want to see them use that on Dunka. So Dunka has failed, so they don't get any vitality there. Yeah, there's not much else to do, so let's use Vivaldi Bank. Or I could use it on Tunnel Drill. I just realized. I could just kill everything. And Tunnel Drill is first. The problem is, if they have a single Nature's Rebuke, it's over. Um, and just Sea Jackal is, I think it's better. I could use Tunnel Drill, but that's just really greedy. No, I'm gonna do Sea Jackal. Yeah, I'm gonna do Sea Jackal. Um, sea Jackal over here. Let's do this, let's do this, and let's do this one more time. I just wanna keep it as high as, as, high as possible. Yeah, I think Donald Drill would have would have probably died. There's a, I know there's a single. There we go. There's an HS rebuke. It would have killed Donald Drill. Okay. Whew. That was a good a good uh, guess there. So um, I'm gonna have to use Sea Jackal twice, and then get Sigi on the board. Sigi is gonna give us a full power, so I can tap the Sea Jackal twice again. So the final card that they will have is Gord. I'm assuming. This isn't Games Council is gone, so it's Gord directly, so I think I got this. Um, so... Yeah, this doesn't really matter. I have one Crown Spitter, so I get at least six coins out of this. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna use him fully and then use Swindle. Swindle is also gonna boost, um, yeah, Siggy. So Sea Jackal, one, two, three. Sea Jackal, Sea Jackal, uh, well, another time, Sea Jackal. One, two, and another three. And that's Sea Jackal, Sea Jackal, Sea Jackal. There we go. Whew, 13 points ahead still. So that was uh, against Coatel. So that was really good. I think we uh, showed off how powerful this deck just is. So as always, Syndicate just revolves around the basic math. Try to calculate how many coins you will get and try to spend them all before you're getting the coins. So at the end there, I even wasted three coins because of the Vivaldi Bank coins. I didn't get any. Um, but yeah, and try to estimate, so the, that final round actually came down to me guessing like, okay, there was still one Nature's Rebuke in their deck. They used one at the beginning, then another one, well, they resurrected it with Force Protective, so there was still one Nature's Rebuke in their deck, and they actually would have used them on Tunnel Drill. So Sea Jackal was definitely the way to go, because Karate Heatwave was already gone as well. They used that on Scoundrel. So uh, just trying to keep in mind what your opponent uses, and I think there's barely any matchup against the mirror of course but barely other, any other matchup that will lose you um yeah any matches in the, with this deck it is just so incredibly powerful uh so why do you play passively you don't put anything on the board um and just gain coins unless you are ready to unload on your opponent which is uh, something that works very well against Nilfgaard as well so just try to build up some coins passively wait out until you see a very juicy target to hit Put a bounty on it and then play a card that can actually destroy it. Even if your opponent then destroys that single card, you still have played it for its full potential because the bounty will have given you double uh, value of all of those coins that you spent. Um, so yeah, it is just really good. The only card that's really scary to brick is Graydon. If I would have used it in that final uh, match, I wouldn't have been able to get a target because I didn't have any bounties anymore. But in total, if you can keep Witchfinder alive especially, the game is just over for your opponent. If your opponent has no answer for Witchfinder and you still have a few damage dealers in hand, which remember this deck has about five of them, um, this the, the game is just over. The Witchfinder just continuously puts those bounties down. Most important thing, 
You have Cleaver to put the pockets around Tunnel Drill. Tunnel Drill is your most effective damage healer, so keep that until the last um, round. Unless you see a, a very good opening at the beginning to just use it there and get the upper hand with a uh, card advantage or something like that if your opponent starts at blue coin. Which you actually did in the match against monsters. Um, not with Tunnel Drill, but we could have done that with Tunnel Drill as well. And then other than that, yeah, we have... Uh, so Slander is one. We have a few ways of actually giving opponents a bounty. So Slander is one, then double one for Hysteria, one with Kurt, then one with Scoundrel, and of course the Witchfinder can keep, keep going. And then on the other hand, we need to destroy those units. We have Damage Shields, we have the Scoundrel, we have Grade that can destroy a single unit. Tunnel Drill, 3 damage for 2 coins, very powerful. Horseman's Freak Show, another one that gives you 2 damage per 2 coins. And then the Witch Hunter Execution, which does the same 1 for 1. Um, along with, of course, Dip in the Pond down for 3 damage. Confession Extractor giving you 3 extra damage while it's in the graveyard. And Hysteria always doing 3 damage or more, uh, depending on if that unit already has bounty. So there's... This deck is really balanced in the amount of damage dealers and uh, bounty cards you have. And on top of that, you also have a few boosting cards with the um, Novigrading Justice CD, giving you a lot more coins. Um, and of course, Blacksmith allowing you to boost a few extra things from yourself. So uh, yeah, just a very balanced deck overall. It's not the typical meta deck you'll see. It also differs quite a bit from our Line Pockets meta deck, but I wager it is just as powerful. Syndicate is just a really, really good faction for the past few months, and I think it's gonna stay that way for a little longer. And that's it for today for the Money Hunters deck. Let me know what you think of this deck. What's this deck guide also useful? Because I know uh, Syndicate is a really tough um, faction to actually navigate, if you're, especially if you're fresh, uh, if you're new to the game. Um, so let me know if there's anything else you have questions uh, for, because I, I will be more than happy to answer them in the comment section down below. Um, next up, I do still have plans for deck guides, but I I'm, I'm, I'm getting married um, in a few days, so it will depend on my planning there if I just get to squeeze in just another deck guide before the end of the month. Um, because yeah, again, I'm getting married on this Saturday, so um, yeah, you might see not see a lot of videos in the coming uh, two weeks, but uh, I'll try to pre-make a few of them. I mean, I'm speaking to the air here because I, I know the um, <laughs> you'll see in the schedule regardless whether there's going to be any other videos. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching, as always. Uh, thank you for the support because I've seen a few uh, very nice comments in the previous deck guides as well. So thank you enormously for that support. And I'll see you in the next episode of Gwen Patch and the next deck guide. Thank you for watching and uh, goodbye. Stay nutty.